If you have been mocked by a friend or family member because of your banjo nail, post below. Hello, welcome to Banjo Quest. My name is Tom Collins and we are talking about nails and claw hammer today on Banjo Quest. So today we're going to talk all things fingernail. I'm going to show you where I hit, how I hit, how I maintain and shape my nail. And I figured out a nail hack in the last four weeks that has completely changed my outlook on my fingernail life. And I'm gonna share that with you. Stay tuned to the end of the video for that. Before we get started today, a couple things. This video is brought to you by Banjo Quest. Banjo Quest is an amazing online community. You get access to tons, hundreds of videos of content, lots of tab downloads, access to my Banjo boot camps. Check that out in the link below. Go to patreon.com slash Tom Collins for more information about my Banjo Quest project. It is an amazing online banjo community. If you enjoy the content that I produce for free on YouTube, you can also hop on over to my Banjo Quest store and get an amazing t-shirt in the process while supporting what I do. I'm wearing one now. The link is in the description below. Enjoy. All right, a quick caveat to get out of the way here. You don't need to have a natural nail to play a great claw hammer banjo or to have beautiful tone. So. Don't worry if you can't grow one physically or if you have a profession that prevents you for whatever reason from growing a nail. I know a lot of you are in those situations. You can still work around that by getting an acrylic nail or using these amazing claw hammer picks that are available today. So check those out, do your research. There are tons of options for you out there. I really like the Kling Pro. I have one sitting on my desk and I've done a review on that in the past, but there are lots of other options as well. This is a very particular an individual thing, so you've got to do a little homework and ask friends who also play the banjo. Banjo Quest would be a good community if you want to tap into some collective knowledge on how people cope with the inability to have long nails. All right, let's talk about the nail itself. I, with my excellent drawing skills, that's not true at all, have drawn you guys a picture to help illustrate where I strike with my banjo nail on the instrument. So you'll notice from this little drawing here that I think of my banjo nail as a clock face and I tend to strike on the upper left-hand corner if I'm looking down at my fingernail. That is the 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock position. The corner of the nail actually impacts the string, passes through the string into the next highest string. This is just the way I have derived most of my tone. It gives me good clearance. It allows me to punch through. And it's also that curve of the nail, that corner where it curves over is really, really strong. It's stronger than sort of the dead center or the 12 o'clock position of the nail, which can kind of fold and flap if it gets too long. Incidentally, I keep, even when my nail is in great shape, I keep my nails, I think, relatively short compared to a lot of claw hammer players that I know. So. I am probably overhang my end of my finger by a millimeter or two if I'm feeling dangerous. I find if my nail gets too long, I actually can bruise my nail bed. So I keep it relatively short and I've just gotten used to this. I get a ton of clarity this way and it also preserves the nail. It's less apt to break if it's relatively short. I think that length of the nail doesn't matter so much. I think that you can get used to almost any length and still get great tone and clarity. It's all about what you practice with. So I tend to keep my nails short and I would recommend that for you as well. So I play with the 10 o'clock corner of my nail. There are players out there in the world that play with the other corner, the two o'clock position. I have some students who do that and that works fine too. So you've got to find your happy place in terms of which corner you use, but I would recommend you trying your corners if you are just playing dead on with the nail. The other thing I do to maintain this shape is I have a pretty blunt shape when I file my nails. I never use clippers, never use clippers on your nails because that will make them brittle. It can add these hairline cracks, which can cause all sorts of problems. Always use files. I have this file that has lots of different grits of sandpaper on it. So you can really remove material if you need to, but you can also buff and keep the nail super, super shiny and smooth. I like this because any burrs or anything that's hanging off the nail can catch, can cause splits, cracks, etc. So keep the nails buffed and beautiful. That's how I do it here in the studio. All right, the second thing we need to talk about that my family convinced me of is moisturizing. I know this is kind of funny. This is the stuff I use. I will use this Waleda skin food and it was a game changer for me when I started using it, especially in the winter. 
I do some wood heating here in New England in our brutal winters. I do a lot of chopping wood, I do gardening, I do lots of dishes. All of these things, especially in the dry winter months, can conspire to create brittle nails. So my family convinced me that I needed to be moisturizing on a daily basis, and I keep this stuff right on my desk in the studio so I can just grab and go in the morning and throughout the day. This is amazing. Again, I have no relationship to this company, but I use their product and it has saved me a lot of wear and tear. It keeps the nail supple so it doesn't break as much. Highly recommend you finding a way to moisturize your hands and nails, especially in the drier winter months. So our third and final tip today is something I discovered a few weeks ago that has completely been a game changer for me as far as preventing nail wear goes. I'm gonna share that with you today. So I got to the point this winter where I split my nail down the middle because I was putting so many hours in, whether it was practicing, teaching, or creating videos like this one, I could not get out of the hole. I was just constantly splitting my nail, cracking it, chipping it, because it had gotten so thin from so many hours of play. I would literally wake up in the morning and think, all right, I've only got so many downstrokes today before I have to stop playing because I'm wearing through my nails so fast. And that is a terrible mindset to be in as a musician, as someone who's trying to teach, as someone who's trying to make videos like this one. It really was discouraging. So I reached way back into my banjo knowledge and I remembered that when I was first starting, there was a tip going around the banjo net grapevine and that was to put scotch tape on the nail to prevent nail wear. Lots of people have done this technique. This is not new. I didn't come up with this at all. But I have used this technique before and have never found it to work because the scotch tape would actually peel layers of the nail off, just micro layers. And I thought, well, that doesn't work because if you keep peeling these on and off throughout the day, you're still kind of wearing the nail down. You got sticky residue. It also messed with my tone. It was uncomfortable. I didn't like doing it at all, but I thought I had to do something to take my nail back. So I went into the local drugstore and I bought all of the different kinds of scotch tape, of which there are many, <laughs> surprised to find out. In the drugstore, I bought all of it. I bought every type that I could find. And this was the stuff that changed everything for me. This is scotch wall safe tape. It's thinner. It almost feels like a very thin wax paper. You can put it on your nail. It stays put nice and thin. And then when you're done, you can peel it off and it doesn't peel layers away of your nail. It also doesn't leave a sticky residue, which is awesome. You can just replace as you go. And it completely protects my nail when I'm playing. I can play for hours now and have zero nail wear whatsoever. It has literally changed my banjo life. I have no relationship with the company that makes scotch tape at all, but this is the stuff that I use. I use it every single day now. And actually, before I made this video, I bought some in bulk because I'm so paranoid that they're going to discontinue this type of tape. Go find it, look it up. It's probably available local if you're in the US. You can probably order it online from a number of venues. I highly recommend you try this. I don't know if it will work for everybody, but this has been my secret weapon over the last month. So what I do is simple. So I use my anvil fly tying scissors to cut small pieces. I just simply apply it to half my nail, only really the corner that I'm using to strike the banjo with so it doesn't cover the whole nail. It lasts through at least an hour of heavy playing and then I can just swap it out as I go throughout the day. It has stopped all nail wear whatsoever and the nice thing is it's thin enough so that it doesn't mess with my tone. I still feel like I sound like me when I'm using this stuff. Highly recommended, go hunt some down. Now I know that some folks advocate taking internal supplements for nail growth. I actually talked to a dermatologist about this. She suggested that the science was inconclusive, anecdotal at best, so I didn't even go there. I didn't even, I'm not even interested in it. But you may wanna investigate that on your own. Just be careful, be wary of snake oil. All right, and that does it today. I hope you found this helpful. If you want more information, if you'd like to support what I do here on YouTube, hop on over to Patreon and I will see you next time on Banjo Quest.